Hi everybody, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise chemistry topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying our videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 2 of topic 10, Chemistry of the Environment. First, let's delve into the topic of air quality and climate. Clean, dry air is a vital part of our atmosphere, supplying the essential gases necessary for life. Clean, dry air is composed of approximately 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and the remainder is a mixture of noble gases such as argon, neon and helium and carbon dioxide. However, various human activities and natural processes contribute to the presence of pollutants in the air. Pollutants are harmful substances that enter the environment and cause damage to health and nature. These pollutants include carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and particulates, methane, oxides of nitrogen and sulfur dioxide. Here's a table outlining the sources and various air pollutants and their adverse effects. Carbon dioxide comes from the complete combustion of carbon containing fuels. Carbon monoxide and particulates come from the incomplete combustion of carbon containing fuels. Methane comes from the decomposition of vegetation and waste gases from digestion in animals. Oxides of nitrogen are from car engines. Sulfur dioxide comes from the combustion of fossil fuels which contain sulfur compounds. Higher levels of carbon dioxide leads to increased global warming which leads to climate change. Carbon monoxide is a toxic gas. Particulates lead to increased risk of respiratory problems and cancer. Higher levels of methane leads to increased global warming which leads to climate change. Oxides of nitrogen lead to acid rain, photochemical smog and respiratory problems. Sulfur dioxide leads to acid rain. Moving on, we'll discuss greenhouse gases and global warming. Global warming is the rise in Earth's temperature caused by greenhouse gases. This leads to changes in weather patterns and other climate effects. Greenhouse gases are gases in the Earth's atmosphere that trap heat and keep the planet warm. Carbon dioxide and methane are examples of greenhouse gases. Here's how the greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and methane cause global warming. The sun warms the earth's surface. The earth's surface radiates thermal energy or heat back into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere absorb this heat. Some thermal energy tries to escape from Earth into space. Greenhouse gases trap this heat in the atmosphere. These gases re-emit the heat in different directions. Some of the heat is sent back towards the Earth's surface, trapping warmth in the atmosphere. So, as we just learned, Carbon dioxide and methane absorb and re-emit thermal energy and some of the re-emitted heat is directed back towards the Earth's surface. This reduces the amount of heat escaping into space. The trapped heat causes the warming effect known as global warming. 
let's turn our attention to environmental issues. Climate change is the rise in Earth's temperature from greenhouse gases. Acid rain is rain made acidic by pollution. These are some major environmental problems. There are several ways to tackle them, including reducing greenhouse gas emissions and minimizing pollutants that cause acid rain. Let's take a closer look. Here are some ways to reduce the effects of climate change. Planting trees. Trees absorb carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, through photosynthesis, helping to reduce the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Reduction in livestock farming. Livestock, especially cattle, produce methane, a potent greenhouse gas. Reducing livestock farming lowers methane emissions, helping to mitigate global warming. Decreasing the use of fossil fuels. Burning fossil fuels releases large amounts of carbon dioxide. Switching to alternative energy sources reduces these emissions and slows down climate change. Increasing use of hydrogen and renewable energy. Hydrogen energy produces water as a byproduct and renewable energy sources like wind and solar generate power without emitting greenhouse gases. This transition helps reduce the reliance on fossil fuels and lowers carbon emissions. Here are some ways to reduce the effects of acid rain. Use of catalytic converters in vehicles. Catalytic converters reduce harmful emissions from vehicle exhaust. High temperatures in car engines cause nitrogen and oxygen to react and form nitrogen oxides, which contribute to smog and acid rain. Catalytic converters use special materials to speed up reactions that convert nitrogen oxides to nitrogen and carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide, making the exhaust gases less harmful. Here's an example. Reducing sulfur dioxide emissions. Using low sulfur fuels and processes like Flu gas desulfurization can reduce sulfur dioxide emissions. In flu gas desulfurization, sulfur dioxide reacts with calcium oxide. This process helps lower the amount of sulfur dioxide released into the atmosphere, which reduces the formation of acid rain. Lastly, let's talk about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process in which plants make glucose and oxygen from carbon dioxide and water. This happens in the chloroplasts of plant cells where chlorophyll absorbs light energy. The energy is used to turn carbon dioxide and water into glucose for the plant's energy while oxygen is released as a byproduct. The word equation for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide and water to give glucose and oxygen. And this is the symbol equation for photosynthesis. That concludes Topic 10, Chemistry of the Environment. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here's a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Be sure to check out our other videos from our playlists. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more revision videos. Bye!